This podcast is brought to you by the School of Advanced Study, University of London. Okay, now we're going to try something else. Yes. Uh, uh, I'm going to give you this and ask you to see what it smells like. Yes, that is one of my, uh, I do this for my, uh, uh, with a spray as well. Yes, it's yes. Vanilla. And what is it, does it smell? Well, it smells sweet. Right. But sweet doesn't have a smell. Sweet doesn't have a smell, so we you eat go. it. We're not going to get any sweetness in it. No, it's bitter. Mmm, it's kind of licorice Mmm, mm. bitter. Licorice, slight astringency. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm, no yeah. So, so there's nothing sweet in there, and yet when we smell it, we say sweet. Why do we do that? It's the learned association. So we grow up with vanilla in milkshake, ice cream, biscuits, mm-hmm. um, and that learned association is really powerful. Mm-hmm. So <clears throat> it's the same learned association where you would think of a sound like a, a symbol. Mm. That noise. Mm. If you were to call that sound a food, well, it certainly wouldn't be a the chocolate sauce. Yeah, no, it's going to be lemon, lemon or something. Yeah, something exactly. sharp. Exactly. Something sharp. Exactly. So that's interesting because we, we, we've got a sound that's sharp, we've got a taste that's sharp, and of yep. course sharp is a feel. Yes. So it's very easy to cross the senses in this way and even to talk about that smelling sweet of the sweets of taste. So there's a bit of sensory confusion that yes. we all have. Yeah. Yes, exactly. And it is that, it's just that learned association. Um, which I think is fascinating, yeah. and it, it can, you can really generate some interesting, yeah. exciting results. From cooking. So let's try some more on smell. Um, we can do the jelly bean test. So if we take a jelly bean, don't don't care which one. Okay, just take a jelly bean. I'm going to hold our nose tightly yes. pinched shut, and as though we were deep sea diving, far through. I get some sweetness. I get some sourness. Sweet. And then let so. let go of the nose. Good. And now you get the flavour. Well, I think it's fascinating because we don't realise the sense of smell and the sense of taste, so the sweet and sour and salt and bitter and umami in here and then all the smells up here, yeah. create flavour. Exactly. But they're no more closely no. Or, fur- or or distantly linked than the sense of sight and sound. Yeah. Amazing. It's amazing the amazing. brain then joins the two together. And yes. I always example, if you're looking at look, watch a TV screen or a film and someone's talking on the screen and you watch it. And if you stop to think about it, you kind of know the speakers maybe on the ceiling or behind you. Right. But the brain doesn't need to be from the jigsaw to yeah. the picture. Right. It can't you be coming from the screen, that's no. not where the voices are no. coming from. But you just assume it does. The brain puts them together. Yeah. Right. Exactly. So, I'm going to give you something again on smell, which I think you'll know. Have a smell of that and tell me what, what you think it is. Ah, oh, that's benzaldehyde. <laughs> that's benzaldehyde. That's benzaldehyde. <laughs> tell me about benzaldehyde. Benzaldehyde is the smell of bitter almond. Mm-hmm. So it's my marzipan rather than almond. Mm-hmm. I remember in mm-hmm. 2004 I did a demonstration in uh, it was my first big demo in Spain, Madrid. Big congress, 800 people. I was really nervous. Um, actually, I, it was the first time I was, I was showing the use of liquid nitrogen, made the, little, the, the strips of releasing, mm-hmm. releasing uh, smell. I was talking about uh, the kind of tasting of smell. Mm-hmm. And what does that mean? Is that, mm-hmm. so again, it's that, mm-hmm. that crossing over. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then in the end, I was talking about aroma molecules, mm. and um, and this is a really good example actually. How naivety is a great thing, or can be a great thing. So I had this idea when I first started to learn that there was. You think about uh, banana. Uh, banana is an ingredient, but actually contains loads of ingredients, mm. loads of molecules that mm. make up the the, 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 the taste and the flavour and the mm-hmm. texture of the banana. And then I thought, oh, maybe you could then, just, by, by looking at foods with similar molecules, you could start to pair. Mm-hmm. And this was early 2002, 2003, uh, and I had this whole thing about uh, flavour pairings, mm. food pairings. And unusual, fl- unusual. Unusual ones, yeah. yeah. And right. it, starts, it started a movement in Belgium. And after a few years of getting them known, starting to know more about the aroma, mm-hmm. the world of molecules, mm-hmm. you realise there's as many reasons why they won't work as why it will work. Mm-hmm. But it's a great tool for creativity. Yeah, sure. However, however, there is, uh, there's a guy in Cambridge now, so we're picking, picking this up and looking at a 3D network mm-hmm. where you're starting to get bridge molecules. Right, so because you do need to bridge. I think one of the thinking uh, of the early days was if, if two ingredients share a molecule, then they're bound to be pairable, but that we now know that isn't true. Yes, yeah. uh, exactly. Um, although, as I said, it actually can be quite a nice little tool for the chefs. And the great, you know, the great thing about, um, the great thing about Science, it's still, I think a lot of people don't get, they think that science is a load of boring people in lab coats with triples. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, it's the same as cooking. Yes. You know, quite often, 
it's a lot of experimentation, mm -hmm. and then you need the science to try and back up what you found and make, mm -hmm. make, enable mm -hmm. you to do it again or learn from it. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of it's that empirical science. You want to you want to explain, you want to explore, you want to understand. But finish your story for me about being okay. in Spain and Ben's aldehyde. What happened? <coughs> so, so I was trying to explain uh, to the audience that, like. A bizarre a banana consists of loads of aroma molecules, mm -hmm. and so that this benzaldehyde is one molecule. Yeah. And it sounds you tell somebody, oh, would you like some benz benzaldehyde? Mm -hmm. oh, I don't really. That's a chemical. Mm -hmm. It's that kind of yes. perception. Yes. I smell it. It's marzipan. Lovely. So we had we had eight hundred balloons mm -hmm. with a little valve, one with a valve, which we had put a few drops of benzaldehyde <laughs> in the balloon, and we got the audience to blow them up, heat uh, the blow, blow the balloons up, and then. Pull the valve off, mm -hmm. and I stood on stage. I went three, two, one, and they went, Everyone. and it just pumped the smell of a Ben's wow. album. I think wow. I probably wasn't the most popular person on that congress. <laughs> three days later, the whole place is still, still smelling <laughs> yeah. of, of, of bitter almond. So, some people when they smell Ben's aldehyde, they say cherry. Yes. Now, why is that? Yeah, because it, it's um, it's Ben's aldehyde is also in, in, in cherry stones, peach stones, right. it's that. Right. Sometimes when you're cooking, yeah. Actually, if you're going to do a dish with cherries or apricots or mm. peaches, get the stone, mm. bash them up, put them in muslin, and then mm -hmm. pop them in, into the into the pot. Mm -hmm. and you'll get that exact get same flavour. In fact, we did a dish which was it was um, was all linked to before I wrote it on scallops, but it was benzaldehyde. Mm -hmm. So we did yeah. cherries, and we did yeah. amaretto, yeah. Um, and we did almonds. So it's travelling all the way through them. I yeah. often think it's uh, Mr. Kipling. Cake. Bakewell, 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 Bakewell tart. Exactly. It's Bakewell tart, isn't Absolutely it? right. Yeah. And then it's a, that's a great example of it's how you know, we've a lot of this stuff we've been doing for years. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And it's like umami when you talk about um, Italians, pizza, mm. tomato and parmesan. Mm -hmm. Fantastic yeah. combination. It's a great combination. Right. And that's that's because they both have umami, they're both umami rich. Yes, yeah, yeah. Exactly. And then you have I think two kinds of umami, you have nucleotides and um, peptides. Yes, rubber nucleotides. Uh, your nucleotide peptides, and then you got oh, then then you get this. If you get the balance right, there's this synergistic effect. Yes. Like you get eight times the amount, and then there's something called I can't remember the name. It's when you get too much umami. Uh huh. What happens? It's called something else, and that's right. not and good. That, and that's not good. Apparently, it's not good. But but lots of the classic dishes: scallops and peas, uh, tomato and anchovy. <coughs> that's part of that synergistic combination. Yeah, it is. It? And even things like ratatouille, you've got green uh -huh. beans and tomatoes. Right, right. Um, there's yeah. something when you put tomatoes yes. and green beans together. Better than both. Bit more meat yes. meatiness. Yeah. To it. yeah, definitely. Wonderful. Um, and you said maybe crab, mackerel, those ingredients, and you start putting you start putting tomatoes or shiitake yeah. or a little bit of soy. There's a reason yeah. why you, you kind of take. Things like bonito and just a little bit of soy sauce. Yeah, so then, wow, yeah. It, it opens up. Now